what is up everybody dreadful rick's back welcome to the dreadful minutes and this will be a uh i guess a contest video for uh this is a buzzer beater entry so as usual <laughs> and uh so bill uh, has a channel the ninth circle he's based out of uh, salt lake city so very cool and uh uh all the guy definitely knows his shit very much into metal and a bunch of other stuff uh, he was even on heavy metallurgy uh, with our our buddy Jeff, uh, gas mask and hand grenades, talking about industrial metal. So his range and tastes kind of expand uh, all over the place. So he reached 200 subs and, you know, he wants us to show our valuables. So I guess 202, uh, mainly what he's asking for, good things come in twos, right? Twix, Wonder Twins uh scott wilcox and pie face you know all those kind of things and that work in pairs if you will so uh yeah he also wants us to uh answer a question about what is it about physical media that makes us uh gravitates us to it or you know compels us to collect that kind of stuff uh why not just throw everything into an ipod and call it a day you know that kind of a thing so uh yeah so, uh, you know, before I begin, you know, uh, let me just sh talk about a couple of things because it is, uh, by the time I drop this, it'll be Halloween, Halloween night, you know, that period. So, uh, thought it'd be a couple of good listens and some things to think about. So we do have, a, have an election happening in the U.S. Uh, come next week at the time of this recording. And every single time, no fail, I keep thinking of this movie because... Falling Down, Michael Douglas. It came out in, I want to say, 1993, something along those lines. I caught it on Scrambled HBO way back in the day. And, <laughs> you know, about a dude who snaps and just had enough about the rigors of general society and uncaring society where you kind of just go through the and just drone on. And uh, a bunch of other shit happens too. But, you know, when you think about things that go on and you never see any change and life just goes on as usual you know you get these michael douglas is coming out of the woodwork and uh you know one of the highlights of that scene was the uh wanting breakfast at a certain time but if you're like a minute over you can't get your breakfast it's lunchtime here we are circa 2024 and you can still go to places and they will not simply serve you breakfast past the a lot of time so some of us roll out of bed after 10 30 and we still want our or egg sandwiches, you know? So, uh, Michael Douglas, you know, fought for us to be able to, uh, try and have some of the privileges, but it seems like we're still not, have not made any progress there. <laughs> yeah, you could just go to a diner and get your, you know, your omelet there, if you will, but that's not the point. Uh, anyway, so I got some, um, recommendations. I was on the, uh, the Doom Metal stream with, uh, Alan and Kellen from Killing for Company, and we talked about Doom Metal. Uh, one of the polls I didn't show was, uh, was a band from Austria called D-E-U-M-U-S, Diemus, Diemus, and uh, it's called Oyer and Terminar, Oyer and Terminar, or something like that, and uh, yeah, it's from Austria, and this thing looks rather ancient with the woodcut kind of look and whatnot, and it very much does sound like that. I found these guys through, uh, through Bandcamp. And uh, simple digipack. They also have a uh, tape version of this, and it sounds it sounds damn ancient. The uh, the vocalist is very much sounds like he's burning in fire and brimstone. It's that uh, that flavor of doom that uh, you just gotta go. Yeah, there's plenty of heaviness and just uh, uh, just sourness and you know total impending torture, you know. So. Highly, highly recommend it if you're a Doom Nut. This will definitely scratch that itch. Uh, here, oh yeah, here's another one. So, uh, so shield your eyes if you don't like to look at boobs. Uh, so, uh, one here is called Ritual Violence. Satanic rock music, I guess it's called? Or just, yeah. Ritual Violence. Uh, this right here, it's a little project. Uh, I, I think this is one of those deals where we don't quite know who the... Uh, uh, yeah. No, okay. No, we do know who the uh, members are. I'm thinking of something else. So, yeah. So, here we are. And um, simple digipack. 
this is some very harsh violent stuff it's, it's kind of falls in that border of raw black metal but with uh, some elements of just noise and it's just it's just again what it sounds like ritual violence this kind of reminds me of a so this is a finish act right it kind of reminds me of another finish act um so albert witchfinder from reverend bazaar uh has a has a had a one kind of a one-shot project called our men in our men in shaft and the album was called psychedelic winter and it's very lo-fi kind of raw black metal and uh, kind of experimental a little a little psychedelic i guess you could say and this has kind of tinges of that it reminds me very much of uh, of this reminds me of that uh what else more boobs and yeah this is a fun one for the halloween season uh notre dame uh notre dame volume one le theater du vampire and uh yeah fun stuff uh i would say this kind of falls in line with um very well performed it take the things that you find annoying about cradle of filth but just make it better <laughs> gothic metal uh with with you know black metal like tinges it has his symphonic moments uh, very cool keyboard work. Uh, this is a classic. Came out way back in the day. And uh, yeah, it's a nice one to spin every now and then. This is one of those deals where it's like the CD looks like a record. Fun. Uh, another one. Uh, shout out to Tyler from AK Bergwander. Kind of uh, let me know that this thing existed. Uh, well, I knew I knew this band existed. I sent him an EP. But I didn't know they had a new drop. So, Gersey Diefel? Doffel? Not quite sure how you say it. Uh, yeah, Black Metal out of New Jersey. And uh, Regimental Records put this one out. So this is their third EP. Uh, it is Reign of Hoof and Wing. Awesome, awesome artwork. Uh, this is a Black Metal band kind of based out of the... I think their whole premise is based on the Jersey Devil, as you can kind of see here. Uh, very cool stuff. Uh, it's So it's four tracks. The last track, uh, She's Had Destroy. Some of you may recognize that. If you follow Death in June, very classic Death in June. Uh, so it's a cover of that, you know, all black metaled out. It's actually very good. That cover may actually be my favorite track on this thing. So, yeah, cool stuff. So, um, those are my pulls uh, for this particular session. Uh, as far as new stuff, no, wait, I lied. <laughs> Pentagram. Uh, you'll be seeing Pentagram a little later, uh, but they have a reissue that I'm excited about. Uh, not my favorite album by them, but Sub Basement uh, dropped in 2001, I believe. I believe Hassel Hassel Vander did most of the instrumentations, and Bobby on vocals, of course. And uh, it's right here. It's, so it's been uh, remastered, uh, remix remastered. So uh, I haven't spent a whole lot of time listening to the remaster, so I don't have much of an opinion of it yet. I'm actually more excited about the artwork because this particular album has had several artwork iterations and they've all sucked. Well, there was one that was quite very well rendered, but didn't quite seem to fit the uh, the mood of the album. Uh, I think they finally nailed and got it right. So I think Alessandra Tony, she's the artist behind this, who so shout out to her for uh, taking on this uh, monumental task. And and I love the back too. Look at that. What is it? Heavy uh heavy psych. Yeah, heavy psych put this out. And just look at that. Finally feels and looks great uh to fit this album. If you've seen the original album, uh you will see what I'm talking about. Called Sub Basement because Liebling used to live in his parents' basement and and it was named after the, his period. Well uh I guess he spent a lot of uh, scarce periods where he didn't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be rich, don't get into doom metal. <laughs> uh, okay, last poll here. Uh, yeah, so cool drop. Uh, this is a 2024, I guess, uh, pressing of... I don't know if it's official. It does, I don't think it is. Night Terrors by, uh, of course, Ozzy Osbourne during that prime heyday. So it's got all the Randy Rhodes tracks. Uh, so this is live in um, Theater Saint Denis, Montreal, Canada. Uh, July 28th, 1981. Uh, very cool artwork. And uh, I think there's several uh, different color variations. This one came in a sort of red. Yeah, it came in sort of just red, black, white, marble looking thing. Not the greatest fit for the artwork, but whatever. It's just a, it's just a live thing. It's not something I'm going to put on a whole lot, but it's just a cool little thing to own. 
Uh, it did come in a sort of little PVC plastic, and we know how long these things last, right? <laughs> so I'm not going to manhandle it too much and ragdoll it around. Uh, but uh, yeah, not not a whole lot in here. No no insert or nothing. But there's there's the back. Those are your tracks. All the all the classic stuff. Uh, yeah, suicide solution, crazy train, flying high. Uh, it's even got paranoid on there. There you go. Last track. There you go. So got a little Sabbath in there. So uh, yeah, uh, let's move on to uh, Bill's questions and uh, show you what I pulled here. So uh, not to keep you guys here for too long. So yeah, I tend to do that, huh? So Bill wants us to show our most valuable things that we own, collectibles and whatnot. He didn't go too nitty gritty about what the particulars are for that. So uh, I tend I pulled some things that were more on the sentimental side rather than the uh, monetary value, I guess if you will, uh, side of things. Although I do have one that's a little kind of a kind of a bigger deal, uh, but uh, some stuff is stuff that was uh, given to me by uh, people that are friends, uh, personal friends of mine, people that I've known through the VC and whatnot. Uh, so I'm going to start with um, something that um, Alan. Uh, so you guys know the channel, Let's Talk Metal, co-host of the Heavy Metallurgy channel. And uh, so you heard me talk about Pentagram. Here they are again. See, I told you they'd be back. And they put up this sort of, um, I guess, compilation of um, their, their, you know, their early material, first days here. So Relapse issued this back in the day. The current pressings don't include the 7-inch. Uh, the original pressing did. And the 7-inch include the material or what you call a replication of when they were called macabre uh they went under that, that original name and uh so alan got wind of that news and it was around the holidays of last year i believe he sent me uh uh the relapse uh re duplication of that macabre seven inch it came out way back in the day and it was one that was i was missing and uh he didn't have to do that, but he did. I don't know if he took it from his personal stash or what, but I was taken aback uh, that it was there. So very, very cool. I believe this 7-inch in of itself is worth, even the repress, is it's worth quite a bit of cash, more than most people want to pay for a 7-inch. A uh, so now this feels complete to me that this is kind of part of it, even though this is not the, the pressing that included it, uh, it's still part of that same kind of collection. And uh, I really not did not want to go back and rebuy this again with the seven inch and pay more out of pocket. So uh, thank you so much, Alan, for that. And so I'm definitely not parting with that. And uh, so it's just the '70s material, you know. The band goes goes away back. And um, so instead of two, let me let me do three because my friend Melissa. Uh, sent me some things. So if you watched the dreadful Halloween 2023 edition, uh, you may have already seen me shown this, but taking this opportunity, I don't think I showed this particular one here. Uh, this is the, uh, so Melissa uh, and her husband uh, got, uh, I guess, wind of some toys and things and action figures and whatnot, and they were looking to, to sell a lot of this. So she asked me if I was interested in any of it. And she ended up uh, sending some of it my way, and uh, like a you know like a friend, she didn't charge me for any of it. I was more than willing to pay for some of this stuff. So it kind of makes it extra special that fact that it was gifted, you know the way it was. Uh, so Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, uh, perfect for Halloween. Yeah, uh, this was a uh, Atomic Time, I guess is the, the the company that put this out. So this is all unopened, still in the original packaging. And uh, very cool. And uh, here's another one. She, she kind of sent my way. This I did show in the in the Halloween video last year. And this was a Figures Toy Company. There you go. And uh, along with all of that, she also gave me a whole bunch of X Files. What makes this extra cool is that it still has the original KB Toys stickers on it. Uh, right there. Uh, if it'll, I don't think it's gonna unblur. Damn it! But it, it was thirteen ninety nine, so I, I, I'm guessing the nineteen ninety. So whenever this came out, nineteen ninety eight says here. 
uh, you factor in inflation, this is, this is pretty pricey. Uh, not down to four ninety nine. must have been during the clearance. Uh, but it's pretty cool, still in the packaging. X-Files no longer around. Uh, KB Toys no longer around. So um, here's another one. Uh, Attack Alien. Uh, here's a, a Scully. And uh, last but not least, I gotta have Molder, right? And uh, here's Molder with the flashlight. So thank you again, Melissa. Uh, very cool uh, to have uh, stuff like this that I know is collectible. And I loved X-Files as a kid you know, or a teen back in the 90s. Uh, also, um, this band uh, has an album, uh, I believe The Graces of Death, something like that, dropping in December on Byron Recordings. So very timely. So uh, Canis Dearest. So sometime back, uh, Canis Dearest Independence uh, to the Beast was a uh, my album of the, of the year for 2020. And uh, Marty Worm um, sent me uh, a test press of uh, Independence uh, to, to the Beast. And it's, it's, it's monetary value is probably not very high. Probably nothing that's very sought after. But because it came directly from Marty. And it was also a very top album for me. And I'm looking forward to the new one. Uh, this uh, definitely uh, became a very sentimental thing. And important thing to kind of have in the collection for me. So not everything has to have a monetary value for it to be uh, important to you. And this is kind of an example. Uh, I've never played the Test Press, so I'm, I'm guessing it sounds good. <laughs> but so cool to actually have. And uh, so to wrap this video up, uh, I'm going to pull the last thing here because it's probably one of the most sentimental things that I own. And uh, not just because the, this album is awesome, but how I kind of came about it. So uh, a lot of you know who know my backstory. So, you know, my long-term uh, girl uh, who I've been together with for uh, decades. Uh, you know, no longer of this mortal mortal world. Uh, she's she's passed on. And, uh, but during um, the time that I was, you know, her partner and caretaker and all that stuff, you know, she very much knew about my my metal uh, passions and interests and whatnot. And I remember we were laying in bed one day and I, uh, you know, had my, uh, I think it was the Chromebook. I had the Chromebook opens and I was going through a uh, nuclear war now, you know, again, roll her eyes. She's like, there you go. You back, get back on these sites, you know, <laughs> and uh, she noticed I showed particular interest in a particular item. And that would be, uh, so this is the uh, procession to the underworld that they actually had listed. And I knew it had to be an OG because this was only pressed once. I think it was a black and a red. And uh, it's never been repressed ever again. So this is the only wax in, in existence. And they had these uh, on Nuclear War Now. And uh, so, but what they were asking for it was more than I wanted to pay, I guess you could say. So I think I ultimately, let, let, ultimately left the page open. So this will be the chasm uh, procession to the uh, Impro World. And uh, you guys know the band out of Mexico, you know, Dana Carchado, the whole deal. Very interesting death metal, very non-typical uh, death metal. They kind of play in very, very strange, sometimes a little uh, odd, avant-garde, kind of uh, very atmospheric. It's very, just very strange style of death metal. And uh, so this is the red, the red pressing. So uh, how did I come about this? So essentially, uh, one day, you know, I left the, 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 the laptop open on the bed on the page and I went about my business or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure how long I was gone. And uh, I came back and uh, she took it upon herself to to order this for me. <laughs> you know, uh, just got, I guess I showed that much interest and I was kind of just on the fence and I guess a little more than she was used to seeing me be like. And uh, I, I, I guess I came home, closed the laptop, didn't think much of it. I already decided I wasn't going to buy it because it was too much. And I figured it would, have, it would have been sold out later in the day anyway. And uh, lo and behold, this thing shows up in the mailbox. Because I'm like, I didn't remember ordering anything. 
you know, on top of the other boxes that show up uh, <laughs> during that period. And this thing opens up and I just looked at her and I'm like, what the fuck? Did you order this? You know, she looked at me with that kind of smile just like, you know, I did that thing, you know. So uh, something tells me I'm glad I didn't close the laptop lid that day and just, you know, and she was tempted and ordered this thing uh, at a nuclear war now for me uh, with all my knowledge. And that's I decided I wasn't going to. And uh, I wish I could say her thanks, thank you a thousand more times uh, for this, but she's no longer with us. And, uh, but um, this will forever be a treasured thing, not just because of the, the record in of itself, but it, this is an example of monetary along with sentimental value uh, along uh, uh, for me. But uh, yeah, and ending it with that. So the last part of the contest, Bill, why do we do what we do? Why do we collect physical media? You know, um, I look all around and um, some of us <sighs> collect this because we want to listen to music. We love the music, you know, and we, we can digest this material simply by just downloading it digitally. Um, you know, 99% of that stuff that's out there, you could just, you know, rip it or, you know, and or, or download it or whatever. But I think that at the same time, we kind of act like um kind of like the kind of people that like to preserve things things come in cycles they come and go there was a time when when vinyl was was gone you know in the early 2000s late 90s nobody was buying vinyl you know yeah it, yeah it was, it was still pressing it but it was nowhere near it was it was the the height of the cd era and uh you know of course you know later on the the digital took over right and we thought vinyl was dead uh we thought tape was dead you know and uh this stuff kind of had a resurgence now all these people are this is all sought after stuff again you know what i mean when people wouldn't have would have looked the other way you know in the bins go oh you know that, that those old timey records you know we moved on man you know buck rogers here but um uh, here we are you know back in cycles and people are trying to buy this stuff again some people have purchased this stuff and are rebuying the stuff that they've already owned probably for twice triple the money you know, we're factoring probably more than that nowadays. And it's kind of crazy. Uh, so some of us hold on to this kind of stuff now. Uh, because as we've learned the hard way, things do happen in cycles. But also, there is a premium experience to it. Uh, you know, you can open up a player and hit play through your your app. And experience, experience music if you just want to experience just music. But there's something about truly enjoying an album knowing that there is a physical component that was moving the material, whether it's a tape through the mechanism. And it's so fascinating that it sounds that can produce the kind of sounds uh, or whether it's the stylist on the, on the turntable and the experience of seeing that thing spin and knowing that there's a finite amount of, t of spins you could do with these things. Even with CDs, you know, we're like, we thought CDs were infallible for a long time. You know, that th this, this was a media that was digital. You know, it doesn't degrade over time. But later we come to find out CDs do degrade over time. You know, we, there's a thing called disc rot. Uh, that can happen. But I'm speaking in extreme cases. Uh, it's if as long as you, you take care of your collection, you know, don't expose it to harsh temperatures. This stuff can last you a long, long, long time. But like anything else that you collect as physical, comic books or whatever, you know, everything uh, is susceptible to damage with the environment. Uh, but there's also something, there's a charm to owning something that's also like a, like a, like a, like a rose, right? That there's a finite amount of time it can live before, before, before it withers, right? I feel like having this piece of time feels very special. Something about it where we can just easily download it. But the fact that we didn't, uh, in of itself is a practice that's, um, amusing uh but also adds to the fun you know uh i think it's also the same reason why you can go to the, to the store still buy legos and you know you can still buy train sets and you know kids like the tactile feeling of experiencing things where you can just uh you can download a lego app you could play minecraft right but it's not this the same tactile experience as doing it yourself putting in the silas or whatever it may be there's something special about that. It's hard to put everything into words. Um, I'm a I'm a weird generation. 
you know, I I remember, you know, I, you know, I was uh, I was born in 1980, so I records were still king when I was born, even though I was I was a baby. But I remember the the dawn of the CD era. I remember when tapes were fading away, and then now it's kind of back, right? Uh, it never really went away. It was still there, but you know, the heyday was was not what it was. Um, but I. I'm also worried that, that we may be towards the end of a certain height of, of the cycle of, let's say, vinyl because it, it, they're just being priced out of the market. A lot of people are stopped buying because it's it's gotten too expensive. And uh, maybe that's going to be another crash that's going to happen. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's shitty to say that when if you run a record label or you own a record store, you not the kind of stuff you want to hear, right? Uh, you wonder how do those guys survive when the when the crash happened back in the, the 90s, you know, how to stay afloat. You're always going to have connoisseurs. You're always going to have collectors. You're going to have people who are going to pay more than your average person would for certain pieces of material just so they can have it. Um, it's, it's it, you know, maybe, the, maybe part of it is an illness. Maybe part of it is uh, just... A, a sickness, you know, that we that some of us have, where we we must own, we must own. We see it, we gotta physically have it, because in our minds we don't own it if we don't physically have it in our hands. You know what I mean? Like I got like terabyte, two terabytes, or whatever, filled of MP3s. You know, and uh, but to me, in my mind, I don't really own it. Uh, when I have it in my hands, it's been pressed and printed, and it's 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 there's something more special about it. So just my long-winded explanation. So I'm not gonna keep you guys any longer. And uh, Bill, congratulations on 200, man. Uh, you know, his channel, I think, is going strong. Uh, he puts out the kind of content that I like. And uh, he talks about different things. And he doesn't do just collection updates. You know, there's a certain topic or two. You know, he'll kind of stray outside of the, the regular YouTube beaten path and um, talk about certain things. Uh, he's appeared on my on our Saturday Slate Crew live stream. So uh, look forward to having him again on and hanging out with us. So, uh, Bill... Uh, the, uh, cool contest, and uh, we'll see who the winner is. But uh, and everybody who participated in this. So um, catch you all later, and um, keep it dreadful. <laughs>